This is the Fandroid.com review of the HTC One M8. Those iconic dual speaker grills are back, and it's one of the reasons this phone is oozing with personality. To the right of the top speaker is an ambient light sensor and 5 megapixel camera that HTC has named the Selfie Cam, a huge bump up from last year's 2 megapixel offering. Below the matching bottom speaker grille, you'll find the micro USB port and 3.5mm headset jack. Along the right side of the phone, you've got the volume rocker and the micro SD slot. To open that slot, just take a paper clip, bend it open, and push the pointy side into the adjacent hole to the right. Don't be timid, push hard, it will slightly open eventually, and then pull the tray out with your fingers. SanDisk now offers a 128GB microSD card. Yep, 128 gigabytes, so you can load your phone up with multimedia galore. Your iPod is now an antique. On the top of the phone, you've got the power button, and then this big black Knight Rider-ish looking bar is actually an IR blaster for controlling your TV. Cool stuff. There's a micro SIM slot on the left and the brand new HTC Ultra Pixel camera on the back. This thing has two flashes and two lenses and can shoot in an awesome new mode called Duo Cam. The primary camera captures in 1080p and the top one only captures depth information. More on that later. Holding the M8, you get a sense that it wasn't just built, it was crafted. I mean, this thing just feels premium. The edges of the device have this gradual sloping curve and they're tapered so the device is thicker in the middle than it is on the edges. This gives the phone a really good in-your-hand feel. Slim overall, but has that heft to it. And built into that metal unibody frame, you've got a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core processor, two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of onboard memory, and a 2600 milliamp hour battery. The five inch screen is a super LCD three display with 1080p resolution, and it's protected by Gorilla Glass 3. Bright, natural colors, great viewing angles, the real deal. A lot of people are complaining about that black HTC bar, saying it doesn't do anything, it wastes space. There's a lot of stuff going on underneath the surface, and it's just one of those trade-offs that HTC had to make. To be honest, I kind of like it. I mean, you can aim below the actual button, and as long as your thumb just barely touches the main part of the screen, it will register as a button press, and you're actually pressing what feels like a screen and not cold metal. So, I like it. Something I've gotta take some time to address. BOOM SOUND! Seriously though, why other manufacturers haven't done this? I've been saying it for years, since before the Casio G's One Commando came out. You're watching content from the front, you're watching videos, you want your sound to come from the same place the screen is coming. Careless whisper. So it looks awesome, and it sounds a billion times better. Please, people, start putting these speakers on the front of the phones, on all phones. Now let's try that with the Galaxy Note 3. Boom sound wins every time. The One M8 runs Android 4.4 KitKat on Sense 6 and comes with some new features like Motion Launch. Double tap to wake your screen, swipe a dock icon up to open the app, swipe a sleeping screen left for your home screen, swipe up for most recent activity, swipe down for voice dialing, call mom. Would you like me to call mom mobile? and swipe right for Blink Feed. If you don't like Blink Feed, you can remove it the same way you edit your other home pages. Just long press on it and drag it to the trash can, but I suggest you give it a try, really. It only takes about five minutes to set up. You can add all your favorite social networks. There's some new apps you can add like Fitbit, and then you can browse a number of different news sources and add them to your Blink Feed as well. The result is a constantly updated and curated list of interesting stuff for you to check out. For people who find themselves checking their phone for something every so often, it can fulfill your needs or fuel your habit depending on your point of view. I found slow loading pictures and ugly colors turned me away from Blink Feed initially, but the former can be fixed with an OTA and the latter is something you can already fix yourself. In the settings, go to Personalize and Themes and you'll have four different themes to choose from. Hopefully HTC introduces more as time goes on. Apply these and you'll see a brand new wallpaper and color coordination elsewhere like Blink Feed and your quick settings. To toggle your settings, you can just tap on the related icon and it will rotate through the options 
or for quick settings with additional options, either long press the icon or press the three dots in the lower right hand corner. One setting worth pointing out is do not disturb. It's awesome. Uh, it'll turn off all sounds, vibrations, and notification lights. Leave you in peace at your meeting or whatever you're doing. Extra options let you set recurring do not disturb schedules, and you can also identify contacts to bypass those restrictions. Let's jump into the camera, home of the duo cam and the selfies. When you go into the camera app in the bottom right hand corner, those little four dots tap it and you can choose your camera setting. As you can see, the options are camera, video, Zoe camera, selfie, dual capture, and pan 360. At five megapixels and with a wide angle lens, that selfie cam can make a duck face to be reckoned with. And HTC's made it really easy to launch. Just swipe down, selfie. There's even an adjustable countdown timer so everybody's posing on cue. My favorite camera feature, and probably my favorite feature of the entire phone, is called U-Photo, made possible by the Duo camera. This picture of my parents at the Orioles game was taken in full auto mode. One lens takes the picture and the other lens collects information about the depth. U-Photo lets you edit the picture after it was taken and make blurry backgrounds just like you'd see on expensive DSLRs. Not only that, you can choose which part of the picture you want focused and the rest will magically blur around it. It's really awesome. This can make a so-so picture a great picture, and it's the most fun I've had with a smartphone camera in a long time. Here's a cab in New York City driving, captured it in full auto, use that duo cam effect to change the focus, and then apply a sketch to the background and keep the foreground focused. I, I don't know, I absolutely love that. Very cool. There are roughly 10 billion features of this camera, and I can't go over all of them, so check the full written review for more details, and I'll also be doing a full review of just the camera to help you guys out with that. Things like the Zoe camera, which can create animated GIFs, record video and take pictures at the same time, and make these cool photo and video collages. You can also create your own crazy combinations of features and filters, and save that as a named camera for future use. The one last big feature I want to show you guys is the IR blaster that lets you use your HTC One M8 as a remote for your TV. Some other phones have this feature, but really all phones should have this feature. I set this up in about five minutes and it's so much of a better experience than using your typical TV remote. You pretty much just enter your zip code. What type of TV is this? Answer some questions. Pioneer. And it's off to the races. So what's the bottom line on the HTC One M8? Well, I think it's the best looking smartphone on the market, and there definitely isn't a phone with better build quality. The boom sound speakers are amazing, and the display is expectedly beautiful. Sense 6.0 is pleasantly simple. It's got enough tweaks to make it interesting and helpful without approaching that bloatware status. A processor power, battery life, both improved, both good but it's the added 128 gigabyte micro SD card slot that has us most excited about the spec upgrades. The camera can be considered the HTC One M8's best feature or biggest drawback depending on the consumer. If your photos are mostly gonna live on the web and social media and you're more looking to have a picture experience about having fun, you'll love the five megapixel selfie cam and all the options found in the HTC UltraPixel Duo Cam. Image quality, consistency, sometimes leave something to be desired, but no phone's perfect. If you rely on your phone for a bit more in the photography department and are expecting the highest quality images from a smartphone you can get, you should probably look elsewhere. There were some rare occasions, such as in the quick settings and Sense TV, where I noticed some button taps could have been more responsive, but not to an extent that would prevent me from recommending this phone as one of the best you can buy. I definitely loved the HTC One M8 and would recommend it to friends and family.